Breastfeeding sucks. There's no two ways about it. As a new mom, those first few weeks can be really painful, but there is light at the end of the tunnel and I'm gonna give you my top tips of how you survive breastfeeding. First things first, make sure you check for tongue tie. Because of the popularity of taking folic acid during pregnancy, tongue tie has become quite a common occurrence in newborns. And if a baby's tongue tied, they cannot properly latch, they cannot properly take the milk. And so it's going to lead to very sore nipples, a lot of frustrating feeding sessions and an unhappy baby. So before you leave the hospital, do ask them to properly check to see if the baby is or isn't tongue tied. And if your baby is tongue tied, it's a very easy fix. All they need to do is snip the skin that's pulling the tongue down to the bottom of the mouth. Jacob had a full tongue tie, which meant he was only able to feed for about five minutes. And after the procedure, he fed for a full 30 minutes and we haven't had any problems since. The second thing is to prepare to protect yourself. Your nipples are very sensitive and they are going to take a good bashing from your baby's gums. So you're gonna to have to protect yourself. I recommend getting some lanolin cream. There are also things like nipple shields, although we never use those. And we also used some special pads that go over your nipples to create a healing environment. And I also had some pads that went in the fridge that would soothe your nipples after a particularly rough day's feeding. Thirdly, make sure you ask for help and get support with your latch. The latch is vital. When the latch is right, everything is much easier. But remember, you're learning and the baby is learning, so it takes a little bit of time. So be patient and get support. Sometimes the smallest adjustment in the head position, in how you're holding them, can make all the difference. So talk to your midwife, talk to your health visitor, go to lactation consultants or breastfeeding clinics. There are also groups of mothers who breastfeed and get together and you can ask for advice from them as well. Four, learn lots of different breastfeeding positions. Don't just stick to the one, because as the baby grows, you might want to change things up. And also sometimes they are better in one position than the other. Some days they prefer a lie down breastfeeding position. Other days they might need to sit up because they might have a bit of reflux or colic. So it's good to have a couple. We like to do the across the body breastfeeding position, like this, this one. We also, when he was younger and suffering a lot with reflux, would do the underarm breastfeeding position, which is kind of like that. He's a bit too big for that one now. We also do the lying down breastfeeding position, which is really great for early in the morning or the late night feeds when you just want to rest your body and rest your head. Though, a word of warning, try not to fall asleep when you're doing the lie down breastfeeding position. Have something to keep you, keep you awake so that you don't um, accidentally roll onto your baby and squish it. And as they get a bit older and they start holding up their own heads, you can try the position where you put them on your lap across one knee and literally hold them to the breast like that, sometimes resting their head on the arm like that and now he thinks he's going to have a feed. Are you hungry, Bubba? Are you hungry? Or do you just want to suckle? You want to suckle? There we go. Easily pleased. Easily pleased. Next is to set your expectations. If you expect it to be plain sailing, super easy, the most natural thing in the world, then you're going to be in for a huge shock, aren't they, Jacob? But if you know and expect it to be difficult in those first few weeks, then you're going to be better prepared. Also knowing that it does get better. Every single time I fed him around week two, I was thinking this is the last time I'm gonna be able to feed him. It's too painful, I can't carry on. But everyone kept saying to me, it does get better, it does get better. And so I was like, well, I'll just try one more feed. I'll do one more feed, I'll do one more feed. And eventually weeks had passed and suddenly it did get better. So if you know that there is light at the end of the tunnel, you just have to persevere and know that every single feed is bringing you closer to that easier breastfeeding, then that should help you, hopefully, to get through. Next, prepare your feeding station. 
So wherever you're going to feed, make sure you set it up in advance of your feed. So get yourself a glass of water or a bottle of something, not wine. Get yourself some snacks. I like to have little flapjacks on the side ready because you never know when that hunger is going to strike. I think you burn an additional 500 calories and for every day of breastfeeding, which is also a good reason to breastfeed, and you will find that you suddenly get very, very hungry, especially on those night feeds. So a snack, something to drink, get yourself a comfortable pillow. Um, I feed Jacob on a pillow, so um, whether you're using a normal bed pillow or a special horseshoe shaped nursing pillow, have it on hand. There's nothing worse than searching for everything you need with a screaming baby in your arm. Oh, and absolutely vital, don't forget to have a muslin on hand. Perhaps three or four muslins would be good. So those are my basic tips, but there is one thing, one key ingredient that stopped me from giving up breastfeeding altogether, and that is to express and do one bottle feed a day. Now, ideally someone else would take that bottle feed. So the way we did it was I would wake up in the morning, usually and still now, with two engorged breasts huge sore boobies. I feed Jacob on one, he'd only need one. And then once I'd done that, I'd take the pump and I would pump the other. I would then transfer that into a bottle with a newborn teat and I'd put that in the fridge. We get to the evening and I do a feed around eight o'clock. And then as soon as I finish that feed, if, I'm, if I was feeling pretty tired, which I was in those first few weeks, I'd go straight to bed. My partner would then stay up with Jacob for a few hours. What's wrong, sweetie pie? What's wrong? And then he would feed that bottle to Jacob and sit up with him for another few hours. It meant that I got to get four to five hours of uninterrupted sleep, which was an absolute godsend. <laughs> And it also meant, and this is critical, it also meant that my nipples had time to recover. We still follow that pattern of feeding Jacob in the morning, pumping, having a bottle in the fridge, which daddy tends to feed him at night. But now, because he's sleeping a lot better, I don't have to take that early bedtime to catch up on my sleep. So while daddy feeds him his bottle in the night, I will then pump at the same time so that I keep up my flow. And if you are struggling with breastfeeding, whether it's because the baby's having trouble latching or you're having difficulty with the latch and it's painful for you, then my advice is to continue to use a pump for the first few weeks so that you keep your options open. Even if you eventually decide that you just want to bottle feed the whole time or you want to move on to combination feeding or fully formula feeding, if you allow your flow to completely go down, then you're not going to have the option to bring it back up. So keep pumping, keep expressing, so that you can keep that option open until you've definitely made up your mind how you want to move forward. In terms of the equipment that we use, I use this breast pump. I find that um, it's really helpful because it has all the different settings. I imagine most breast pumps will have similar settings, but this breast pump has worked absolutely fine for me. And it takes me about 20, sometimes 30 minutes to do a full breast pump. The other thing I recommend, particularly for the mornings, is to try these breast cups, especially if you find that while you're feeding on one or pumping on one, the other one is leaking a lot. You can just pop these cups over your other nipple and it collects the milk. And if you sterilize the cups, then you can then pour the milk to the milk that you pumped on the other breast. Also to be friendly to the environment and because they're nicer on your nipples, I recommend using reusable breast pads as opposed to the throwaway versions. In terms of the bottles we use, we have two types of bottles. We have the Tommy Tippy bottles, um, but our preference at the moment is the latch bottles, particularly because Jacob has been suffering a lot with reflux and colic. And so these are particularly good for newborns with this issue. It allows the air to, I don't know what it does. I don't know what it does, but they're good for babies that have digestive issues and tend to suck a lot of air in. And we also make sure we have the newborn teats on those bottles so that it reduces the flow so they don't take it in too quickly. 
So there are my breastfeeding survival tips. If you are a breastfeeding mother and you have any additional tips, then please do add them in the comments section below. Let's all help each other. And if you are just starting, then remember there is light at the end of the tunnel. Just persevere and ask for help. Otherwise guys, until next time, take care from me and from Jacob. Bye. And I think to myself, Thinking out loud, we won't need nothing else for the rest of our time. And I know it so well, I will always be by your side. Cause you glue all the pieces back together. Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better. Yeah, you, you're making me wanna try forever. So free, I'm a sweet baby